For Good Haunting Hamilton today, we decided to delve into the eerie side of our city, the haunted spots that give us chills. From the Customs House to Dundurn Castle, Battlefield to Hermitage House, these places hold secrets that transcend time. To unravel the mystery behind the city's more haunted spots, I spoke with two experts, Mark Leslie, author of Haunted Hamilton, and Daniel, a ghost guide with ghostwalks.com. So why is Hamilton so haunted? It's amazing what is hidden kind of under the surface that it's made up of old loyalist towns. So Hamilton itself isn't the most historic, but Barton Township, Stony Creek, Dundas, Ancaster, Flamborough, et cetera, et cetera, they all date back to the 1700s. So there's this history that nobody knows about just kind of sitting under the surface. And what are some of the most haunted spots? Now, Dundurn Castle is definitely top of the list. We've done tours at the Hermitage Ruins, which is legendary. Uh, Scottish Rite of Freemasonry in the past. That's a very interesting and mysterious spot. The, definitely the top of the list for me, though, is the old Custom House. Mark Leslie agrees when it comes to Dundurn Castle. It was the prominent, beautiful, as, as you were entering Hamilton, it was like the, one of the first things you saw was this magnificent mansion on these beautiful grounds. But there it is across from one of the oldest cemeteries in our city as well. And a connection to public executions from the War of 1812 and all kinds of things. But why exactly does Hamilton have a plethora of haunted spaces? Well, Mark Leslie has a theory. There's theories or legends of the crossroads and that the connection between our world and the other world is a lot more magnificent. It's a lot more magnified. It's a lot more powerful at a crossroads. Think about Hamilton as a crossroads, right? The, the travelers going through Hamilton on their way to the United States to get around the lake, you know, from, from a major uh, spot like Toronto. Anywhere that there's a crossroads, you're going to have that. Ghosts and lore of local supernatural phenomena captivate us, and tours provide a unique lens into the past and who may be remaining. Ghost Guide Daniel hosts tours that share our local history, but has he experienced anything a bit more paranormal? Definitely the most vivid for me is at the Hermitage Ruins, and at the end of the tour, I I let people mingle a bit because it was the last tour of the night. And when I came around to tell everybody it was time to go, I saw the two people in the field, they were walking towards me. So I called out to to them a couple times and they walked into the woods. So I'm freaking out from a liability standpoint because I'm (laughs) like, they're going to hurt themselves. So I ran, I had a flashlight, I shone it into the space and there was nobody there. If you want to explore our city's paranormal history more, you can order Mark's book online or join Daniel on one of his tours with dates listed on ghostwalks.com. For Good Haunting Hamilton, I'm Liz Russell. Take a look in any library and you'll see hundreds of chilling tales and scary frights that will keep you at the edge of your seat. But there are two authors whose novels have become legendary and their contributions have shaped the mystery and horror genres, as well as storytelling overall. For Good Haunting Hamilton today, we delve into the queen of mystery and master of horror, Agatha Christie and Stephen King. What is happening? Agatha Christie wrote for many decades and has an extensive list of novels under her name, including the adventures of her detectives Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple. She herself was involved in a mystery when she disappeared for 11 days, only to be found in a hotel miles away from her home and using an alias. Like Christie, Stephen King was inspired by writing when he was young and has wrote countless iconic novels, including It, To Misery, and The Shining. But what is it that makes their stories stand out from other literary legends? On Late Night with Stephen Colbert, King once said the following. It's a tough question. I'm not sure I really know the answer to it. But I do know that on the last tour, what I heard the most was, you scare the hell out of me. Can I have a hug? Mark Leslie is a local author. The humanity that is written inside the stories of Christie and King is a big draw for many readers. Yeah, there may be a monster living in the sewer. But the characters interacting in that world, uh, the monster isn't necessarily the, the only bad guy. That there are, there, are, there are shades of gray people all throughout the story. They're real. 
Um, you, you know, they bleed. If you prick them, they will bleed. If you if you frighten them, they will scream. Um, and and if you wrong them, sometimes they will seek revenge. These stories have had such an impact on people that films and TV adaptations continue to be made to this day. This year alone has seen Hercule Poirot return to the screen in Haunting in Venice, and Stephen King's The Boogeyman received an adaptation as well. Mark says that the adaptations are helpful for fueling people to read the stories behind them. I think those adaptations allow more people the opportunity to discover the things that we discovered in those books. You, you've read a book, you know, 15 years ago, and it still resonates with you. So when the movie adaptation comes out, well, you want to go, you want to see what they did with that. How did they turn what would have been an eight to 10 hour experience of reading a book? How would they adapt that into a two hour movie? So this Halloween, if trick or treating isn't your thing, why not crack open a book or watch some of the many adaptations of Agatha Christie or Stephen King's stories? I can guarantee it'll be a frighteningly good time. For Good Haunting Hamilton, I'm Liz Russell.